Okay, let's talk about it. The Associated Press reporting that Vice President and Democratic presumptive nominee Kamala Harris is set to announce Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota as her running mate. Who else but Alex Michelson would be here live and in living color to break this all down for us. Did you sleep last night? Uh, not much. I was woken <laughs> up by our executive producer who called me with this news this morning. But uh, it is interesting. This is a, a person that a lot of people hadn't really heard of a That's few right. weeks ago. He has performed so exceptionally well in the sort of trial period uh, that he went from being a dark horse to apparently being the pick. So who is Tim Walls? Uh, well, he was uh, grew up in very small town Nebraska. Uh, he enlisted in the military when he was 17 years old. Uh -huh. uh, he became a high school teacher like his father, uh, became a state championship winning football coach while he was a high school teacher <laughs> as well. Uh, his wife also a teacher, somebody he met through that. Uh, he went to state college, not some fancy Ivy League school like so many people did. Uh, in 2006, he was elected to Congress. He served 12 years there, was pretty popular with his colleagues at the time. He was elected governor of Minnesota. He's in his second term there. He is the chair of the Democratic Governors Association, meaning all the governors from around the country. He's the chair of that. Uh, and he is a progressive uh, who is uh, known, though, for uh, attacks with a bit of a twinkle in his eye. In the last few weeks, he's been on TV a lot. He came up with this term to describe J.D. Vance and Donald Trump as weird. Interesting. Which has really he's stuck guy. with a lot of these folks. <laughs> that was first coming from Tim Walls as a way to message. Uh, he's popular with a lot of folks in the progressive base. And now, apparently, he's the pick. A lot of people were, were, were thinking that she was going to go Josh Shapiro. Especially sure. because making that announcement in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So... Uh, Pennsylvania is the most important swing state by far. Without a doubt. Democrats can't win the presidency without Pennsylvania, which is why they're doing this announcement in Pennsylvania today. Uh, it certainly appeared that in terms of uh, the, just the stats of it, that picking the governor of Pennsylvania, who's got a 60 percent approval in that state, whose favorability is plus 30 in Pennsylvania, right. would be the way to go. Uh, but she is not picking Josh Shapiro. It'll be interesting to see if she explains why not. Mm. Kamala Harris has not answered a single question from any reporter since she became the Democratic nominee. Yeah. So will she sort of explain why she didn't go uh, with Josh Shapiro? Uh, Republicans are saying the reason is because he's Jewish and he had been uh, has been pro-Israel for decades. Uh, of course, I'm sure Harris is going to say that's not the case and I'm married to a Jew. I'm not anti-Semitic. <laughs> uh, but that is some of the narrative that's being put out by the Republican party who frankly was more scared to run against Josh Shapiro than they were Tim Walsh. I do wonder if this is going to be an awkward situation, right? Because you know how this goes. The VP pick, uh, the nominee is usually determined within days, maybe hours before that announcement's made. So right. you wonder if Josh Shapiro is going to be there when she makes that announcement. Right. Today. Is he going to be there in Pennsylvania? I'm, I'm assuming that he will be very supportive of this. You usually see that. You have to sort of fall in line. Right. Josh right. Shapiro, just 51 years old. He's got a long history, potentially, as part of an administration or potentially as a presidential candidate in his own right in the future. I mean, as the road, the race for the White House heats up, how will this choice impact Kamala moving forward? Well, you know, it'd be interesting to see how the Trump team reacts. Remember when we were at the Republican convention and the Trump team said we're going to be more unifying and, yeah. and try yeah. to change the language? Well, here's the statement this morning. Uh, Tim Walls will unleash hell on earth. <laughs> that is, that's the subject line. Uh, they say that he's going to be the worst vice president in history. Of course, they've called Kamala Harris the yeah. worst vice president in history. So we're not exactly on the subtle side. Um, it's been interesting to see if there is going to be a vice presidential debate I or wonder. not. Yeah. All of the debates at this point are sort of up up in the air. Uh, but he's previewed what he would do, Tim Walls, against J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance, who is trying to connect with rural America. Of course, he wrote Hillbilly Elegy. Mm -hmm. Walls has said the guy's kind of a phony. Uh, that he doesn't know many people from rural America who then became venture capitalists who moved to San Francisco and made a bunch of money. Uh, he suggested that J.D. Vance has changed his position dramatically on Donald Trump, which is an example of him not being all that genuine. I mean, one thing that Tim Walls has, you see him there in the T-shirt and hat. Uh, you know, you don't see a lot of politicians doing press conferences like that. No, you don't. He, he reads genuine. 
he reads as somebody who's not as typical a politician and as smooth and as, you know, produced as some other folks. And they hope that that sort of cuddly Midwestern Charming, grandpa right? thing That's right. That's can right. connect to people in the, in the middle of the country who may see Kamala Harris as urban you know, from Oakland, lived in Canada, not somebody who spent a lot of time in rural America, and that Tim Walls, who's from there, from a very different world, might be able to speak to people and balance out the ticket a little more a bit of a softer than Kamala side. Harris. Yeah. And, and just a different part of the American experience. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point in our country, there are a lot of folks that live in big cities, and there are a lot of folks that live in the middle of the country. They're hoping to showcase, you know, both of you are home in this ticket. Yeah, Midwest versus Rust Belt. We'll yeah. have to see. Well, Midwest is really important. I yeah. mean, the Democrats need to win Pennsylvania, but they also need to win Michigan mm -hmm. and Wisconsin. And they're hopeful that the Minnesota governor can help with those states as well. Um, but this election is really, really close. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and right now, we're basically in a statistical dead heat. Usually, people don't end up voting, voting for the vice president. They vote for the top of the ticket. And uh, it's unclear where we go next. Wow, how much we has changed see. in the last month? My goodness. Yeah. We shall Thank see, you, but I'll tell you one thing. I know who will be keeping us updated. Yeah, well, we're going, to the, we're going to the Democratic National yeah. Convention in Chicago, so we're going to be, have live reports every morning right here on Good Day LA with uh, coverage continuing yeah. on that. The I journey continues. Thank, Thank you, you. Thanks, guys.